Hey, you slave, cook right away. Bob, my husband, kicked over the chair I was sitting on. I was near the last month of pregnancy. He was furious because I was video calling someone. I felt a sharp pain in my baby bump as I was slammed down on the floor, but he didn't even think of helping me up. Then the person on the video phone who had been watching this situation raised his voice and said, Is that all you want to say? Shut up! Who are you? As soon as Bob checked the screen with a flush face, he turned pale straight away. After that, he ended up being rocked bottom. I am Catherine, 29 years old. I got married to my co-worker, Bob, last year. He was excellent at his job and considered an elite in the company, while my main role was to support him as an office worker. Even during marriage, I continued working, but due to frequent anemia during pregnancy, I switched to remote work. Since then, I struggled to balance work and household chores at home, and at the same time, Bob's attitude became cold. I'm home. Hey, where's dinner? You haven't even prepared for a bath yet. I'm tired from work. It's your job to do chores. I'm sorry, but I've been feeling dizzy and lying down all day. Our workload has been raised because you changed to remote working. Pregnancy is not a disease. Life is not so sweet. At first, I used to argue back. But every time I talk, Bob talks back to me more than double. He completely stressed me out. I can't stand this when the baby is coming soon. Gradually, no matter what he demanded, I just went along with what he said. And yet, I had been hoping in my heart that he would be back to a kind person, thinking that he must have been upset because of my pregnancy. However, his behavior only escalated, and finally, the worst thing happened the other day. It happened when I was on a video phone call. Bob came into my workroom with a frown. Hey, I'm hungry. Is dinner ready yet? When I checked the clock, it was still more than an hour before our usual dinner time. So, since I was still talking on the video phone, I handed a note to Bob saying I'm almost done with my work, and then I'll get ready for make dinner. But... You slave, make dinner quickly. Useless. Bob shouted loudly and kicked over the chair I was sitting on, making me fall to the floor. Ouch! I felt a sharp pain around my belly button, and I couldn't get up. While I felt sorry for leaving the person on the call unattended, I was worried about my baby, so I shouted, Take me to the hospital right now. But Bob looked at me indifferently and let out a big sigh. Don't be too nervous. Anyway, if you happen to miscarry because of this shock, after all, I'm sure the baby will be a failure. Please, please. In pain, I started to lose consciousness, and by my side, Bob started smoking leisurely. Then the person who had been talking to me on the call just raised his voice. Is that all you want to say? Hey. Don't just cut in our conversation. Wait, what? Bob looked at the screen of the call with eyes as big as saucers. As it turns out, the person on the video call was Line, the manager of the HR department, and we were having a meeting about maternity leave procedures. Bob had never expected that I would be talking to such an important person from the company, and his face turned pale. I'll find out what happened later. For now, you should take her to the hospital as soon as possible. Hearing my groans, the manager felt something serious happening and started giving precise instructions to my husband. However, Bob was procrastinating and never called 911, so Line called an ambulance instead. 
Fortunately, at the hospital, the baby in my belly was found to be safe. However, due to the risk of a miscarriage, I had to have an emergency hospitalization. If she goes to the hospital, it'll cost money. That manager guy just messed things up. You shouldn't say that. Without him, the baby might not have been survived. By the way, to tell you the truth, don't say anything more to the guy because it will give a bad impression. I can't spend time without reporting anything to the person who saved my baby's life. I wonder how I should explain today's events. Despite my thoughts, Bob started clapping his hands and laughing heartily, ignoring me. About what I said about slavery, I was just joking. I didn't do anything. Did he believe your story? Oh, he didn't see the scene of kicking the chair, so he completely fell for it. He's really gullible, ha ha. As Bob cheerfully spoke, I stared at him with a cold gaze, and he suddenly became angry. What are you looking at? Anyway, it's your fault for slacking off with household chores and work just because you are pregnant. Bob tore up the maternity record book, threw it in the trash can, and left the room. And from that day on, he never visited the hospital room. Even though Bob had been cold to me so far, I still felt connected to him deep down inside. But through this incident, my tiny hope was shattered. I was filled with apologies to my inborn child thinking, I'm sorry for having such a dad and mom, and I couldn't stop crying alone in the hospital room. But as I looked at the torn maternity record book, those feelings gradually turned into anger towards Bob. I won't let Bob have his way like this. While clutching the maternity record book, I swore in my heart to take revenge on my husband. A few days later, I got permission from the doctor to be discharged, but I decided to go back to my parents' home to give birth in the best condition. Of course, Bob, who wanted to push household chores onto me, ordered me to come home quickly. However, I ignored his instructions and calls and chose to stay at my parents' house. While I was staying with my parents, Bob came all the way to my parents' house to take me back, but my father sent him away, and he never came back. Then, just before I entered the final month of pregnancy, I was called by the HR manager and had to go to the office carrying my big belly. When I was escorted into the meeting room, to my surprise, Bob was there. And while the two of us were waiting for the HR manager to arrive, he started rubbing it on. You haven't texted or called properly. What have you been doing all this time? I've had a tough time because I've had to do all the housework because you weren't at home. I needed to have a rest for my baby. I thought I'd be overworked if I stayed by your side, so I just stayed at my parents' house. My husband clicked his tongue loudly, apparently displeased with my response. Unaware of the real reason why he was called by the HR manager, he took things easily. Maybe, Catherine was called because she slacked off at work to do pregnancy. But I must have been called because I'm getting a promotion for my performance. How much does my salary go up? Ha <laughs> ha. My husband was supposed to be in a bad mood earlier but suddenly he started to calculate the money with a smirk on his face and count on his fingers. You'll be laughing on the other side of your face. I silently let him do whatever he wanted. Then the door of the conference room opened and Line, the HR director, arrived. Lynn, I've been waiting for you. What is this regarding? Don't beat around the bush. Just tell me quickly. My husband was probably expecting good news. He quickly assured the manager to his seat, urging him to get to the main point. However, the words that came out of the manager's mouth devastated him. 
The company takes seriously the harm you've caused to your family and has decided to impose some form of disciplinary action on you. What? Why? I told you, I didn't do anything to Catherine. You believed me, didn't you, Line? I only pretended to be fooled to know your true intentions. According to the manager, he had been keeping an eye on Bob at work, and he heard Bob made slips of the tongue saying pregnant women are a burden, not doing housework or their job. We can trust someone who speaks ill of his pregnant wife, and we've received a report from her about what happened that day. You believe a mere clerk over me, an elite. My husband pointed at me, his face turning red. Given her work attitude, it's unthinkable to me that she would lie. Damn it. I thought I had fooled you. And you're mistaken about something. Catherine is a potential future executive. Don't underestimate her. What? The truth was, my support skills were highly evaluated in the company and I had often been offered about promotions. But I had opted for a clerical position with less workload, wanting children. I never boasted of my status to my husband, so it was natural he didn't know this fact. Catherine might be capable, but surely not as much as me. Your good sales results is fully supported by her work. Can't you see that? In fact, Bob was a mediocre employee until I started pointing out his mistakes in detail and improving his performance. But as soon as I went on maternity leave and his support stopped, his sales plummeted. The manager also revealed his strong distaste for my husband's attitude towards me on the screen. What the hell do you think human life is? You're possibly be transferred. But but my recent sales are picking up, and I'm valuable to the company, right? And since the baby is safe, can't you reduce the penalty? Bob began groveling, but became frozen in his tracks when I revealed the truth to the manager. This is a copy of an email Bob sent from our home computer to the client. Look here, there's evidence of illicit dealings. What's this? You've done something terribly wrong. Bob must have been desperate to produce results, feeling rushed to his declining sales performance. Shockingly, he had been making deals by offering money to clients in exchange for contracts. Moreover, a look back at the message history revealed that he wasn't just involved in one or two instances, but habitually engaged in these under-the-table dealings. Such actions are unacceptable. With the harm to Catherine and this, we don't need someone like you in our company. Please, I'm sorry. It was just a sudden impulse. I'll repent. Please forgive me. My husband, his forehead slick with sweat, repeatedly bowed to the manager, who just silently stared at him. Feeling it was futile to say more to the manager, Bob turned to me next. Please, forgive me. Can't you sway line to let me off the hook? How dare you ask that? Why did you dim in perfect housework from me, knowing I couldn't move well during pregnancy and was near fainting from anemia? Initially, my husband didn't respond to my question. But when the manager and I glared at him together, he reluctantly opened his mouth I only thought of my spouse as a housekeeper. And then when Catherine got pregnant, she stopped doing housework and even stopped supporting my work. What do you expect? I'm carrying a precious life. That's why the life became a nuisance. What? What my husband said next sent chills down my spine. I thought if I forced you to do housework hard, You'd eventually have a miscarriage, and then you'd be back to taking care of me like before. Bob revealed he kicked the chair I was sitting on, hoping to quickly get rid of the unborn child, as it didn't die despite his wishes. 
let's get divorced right now. But be prepared, I'll be asking for an alimony and child support. Wait a minute. I confessed everything, so you should forgive me. I don't know you that. I've already consulted a lawyer, and you'll probably hear from them soon. Mom. The word lawyer seemed to intimidate him, and Bob fell silent. By the way, when I told your parents about this, they were furious. They said they're cutting ties with you. No way. Also, it seems you borrowed $3,000 from your fill under the pretext of childbirth expenses, right? That is. You used it for bribes in your under-the-table dealings, didn't you? Immediately, Bob's put the sour expression on his face. I had probably hit the nail on the head. Abandoned by his company and parents, and now facing divorce, my husband finally knelt before me. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. You hope too much. It's too late for apologies now. Do you even understand what you've done? But I can't live without you. He grabbed my arm with tearful eyes, but I forcefully shook off his hand without a word. I don't have the slightest intention to help you. Don't abandon me. Please, ick, ink, ink. I'll never forgive you. You'll regret forever for what you've done. I said in a cold tone and left the room, leaving him crying out. Later, Bob was officially fired and sued for leaking company information. I divorced him, receiving a lump sum of $30,000 in alimony and $120,000 in child support. With no income and abandoned by his parents, he moved into a shabby apartment and now earns his living through physical labor. Later, I had a healthy baby boy. I plan to return to work when my son turns one and accept the promotion I was previously offered. I want to work hard for my child's sake, 